How's it going everybody? Welcome back to S3M2 Football and welcome to today's prediction video. We're back in it with the UEFA Champions League this week. And for this one, we have a massive clash to look forward to taking place tomorrow on the 1st of October at the Emirates Stadium that sees Arsenal host French juggernauts PSG. We start off our team analysis here with the home side being the Gunners. The last five fixtures for Arsenal have ended in three wins and two draws. In the process, Arsenal have scored 12 goals and conceded five goals. Their last match was a 4-2 win at home against Leicester City in the English Premier League. The first player I'd like to talk about for Arsenal has got to be right winger Bakayo Saka. In eight appearances for Arsenal, Bakayo Saka has scored just one goal, but he's contributed five assists. With Bakayo Saka, I think you have a very quick player who is always just really ready to use his pace, his creativity and his phenomenal work rate out wide to get you goals and assists from those wide positions. The next player I'd like to talk about is a French centre-back, William Saliba. In seven appearances for Arsenal, Saliba has yet to score or assist, but he's already got two yellow cards, and I think that's to be expected for a centre-back. With Saliba, you have a player who's very intelligent defensively, doesn't fly into tackles unnecessarily, but he's more than ready to use his strength to outmuscle and outpower the opposition forwards, but also using his brain to outthink them as well. And the final player I'd like to talk about for Arsenal has got to be Spanish goalkeeper David Raya. In seven appearances for his club side, David Raya has conceded five goals but kept four clean sheets. In David Raya, I think Arsenal have a very solid, very intelligent goalkeeper who's very athletic and very flexible. David Raya is the kind of goalkeeper you can expect to see pulling off a lot of double saves quite often this season. In terms of the injury list for the Gunners, the only players I think they're going to be missing defensively will be Zinchenko, Tomoyasu, and then Tierney, who are all players who they've managed to find replacements for in the setup. In the midfield, I think the Gunners are still going to be missing Martin Odegaard and Mikel Marino, but I think they have enough creative players to just sort of fill those spots as well and just continue on without missing those players too much. Lately, I've noticed Mikel Arteta does change his formation when he plays against a team that he thinks his side need to actually respect. They go from playing a 4-3-3 attacking formation to playing a 4-4-2 with a double pivot in midfield. And I think we're going to see that against PSG as well. It allows the team to still be creative, use their wings out wide, still get goals, but it allows players like Jorginho, Thomas Partey and Declan Rice to sit deeper in the midfield and just spread the ball out wide to players like Martinelli and Bakayo Saka on the touchline. And then you'll see these midfielders just sneaking in behind the enemy lines, looking to receive the ball from those wide players and then take shots or pass it on to the next player. But with Arsenal, I think we're going to see them looking to play counter-attack here, playing quickly at pace, moving the ball out wide and just using the wings to get acres of space and just stretch the opposition all over the pitch. Next up, we look at the away side. Now, for Paris Saint-Germain, the last five fixtures have ended in four wins and one draw. In the process, PSG have scored 11 goals and conceded just four. Their last fixture was, of course, their 3-1 win against Stade Rennes in the French League. The first player I'd like to talk about for PSG has got to be left winger Bradley Barcola. In seven appearances, the young winger has already scored six goals. Bradley Bacola for me is an exciting, energetic young player who's also always ready to use his pace, his close control and his dribbling ability to run with the ball into the box and get finishes from close range. Next up, I'd like to talk about right winger Osman Dembele. In seven appearances for PSG, Dembele has scored four goals and contributed four assists. So there is more than one goal contribution every single match. Dembele as well loves to use his pace and his flexibility and adaptability to display his two-footedness, allowing him to play on either wing, choosing to either go out wide and cross the ball in or cut in and take shots. But with Osman Dembele, you have a player whose creativity is not restricted by using just one single stronger foot. And finally, I'd like to talk about Brazilian centre-back Marquinhos. In six appearances for PSG, Marquinhos also has yet to score or assist, 
but he has picked up one yellow card so far. With Marquinhos, I think you have a centre-back who's always looking to display his ability to tackle very, very well, looking to display his aggression, but also his leadership. Marquinhos is the kind of player who can show you that determination and that aggression without being careless and clumsy in the process. In terms of injuries for PSG, defensively, they're still missing Lucas Hernandez and Presnel Kimpembe, who are going to be out for quite a bit of time. Up front, they're also missing Concalo Ramos at centre forward, but I think they as well lose Enrique and his side have more than enough replacements. Players like Colo Moani, Kang In Lee and Marcos Asensio have ensured that Luis Enrique doesn't really have to change his formation at all this season. So I'm still expecting to see PSG lining up in their typical 4-3-3 attacking formation. Goals have not been a problem for this team at all. They also love to channel the ball through the midfield, playing either possession against certain teams or counter-attack against others. But with PSG, you have a team that is so confident in their ability to break you down that they'll just play centrally and use their pace to catch all of your players off guard and just strike when you least expect it. In terms of the head-to-head -head between these two teams, Arsenal and PSG have played each other four times in the past, with the Gunners coming out on top once, and the other three matches being draws, meaning that PSG have not won against Arsenal as yet. However, two of those matches were played in 1994, which is actually before I was born, and then in 2016. Ironically, the only player remaining from those 2016 clashes is Marquinhos. All the other players who featured in those matches have either retired or moved on. I think both of these teams do have a fair bit of experience in this competition already, but this new format has really changed how teams are approaching games. Both of these teams have not lost as yet in their season. PSG do have other matches to look forward to. They do play Nice following this match, and then Arsenal have to host Southampton. But I think both teams are still going to be feeling as though they can come out here and get all three points. This new Champions League format has put everybody on a single table, and right now we're seeing teams in weird places after the first match day. Nevertheless, I think both of these teams are very confident in themselves and both of them are definitely high flying right now, following some very, very positive league results in their domestic leagues. I think both teams do have the potential to win this one and both teams do have the potential to score. But I think there's slightly a bit more pressure on Arsenal here playing this one at home. They need to pick up all three points. Every team in this Champions League format is looking to win all of their matches at home. And PSG will be very happy to draw at the Emirates. And I actually think that will be the result. I think both teams will score. But I think both teams are going to cancel each other out. PSG will be very happy with any result away from home. They too will be looking to win though because Luis Enrique has instilled that kind of mentality in his team where they can go anywhere, they can beat anyone, they can play well if they choose to do so. But I think knowing that both of these teams want this means that neither team is going to get it. I think they're going to end up cancelling each other out on the day. I think both will score, but I think it just will not be enough for either one of these teams. My final score prediction for this one is going to be Arsenal 1, PSG 1. I think both teams are also going to be looking forward to the other Champions League fixtures and perhaps thinking they can pick up all points in those matches instead. But I think both teams will actually be okay if this match ends in a draw. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now, along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.